Hello, this is the second of two short videos on the evaluation of capital projects using conventional capital budgeting techniques. In this video, I show the use of spreadsheet functions for the calculation of net present value, internal rate of return, and modified internal rate of return summarized here. Now, as you know, to calculate net present value manually, all we have to do is um, take the present value of all the cash flows, including, of course, the initial uh, investments, the initial cash flow. And for project A, it comes out positive, 513.67. Um, if NPV is positive, we, of course, go ahead and, uh, and accept the project. The same goes for project B. So if these projects are independent, based on the NPV, both should be accepted. If they are mutually exclusive, however, B should be accepted because its NPV is larger than A's. Now, using the IRR, we recall that IRR is the rate of return that sets this uh, present value of all the cash flows equal to zero. And so, really, it's by trial and error, as I note here, that we calculate such a rate. And um, once determined, that's going to be the internal rate of return. It's tedious doing it manually, so it's better to use either your financial calculator or, even better yet, spreadsheets, which is where we're headed to right now. So let's go here. So this is our, this is our cash flow input right here. And I'm just going to demo this using the data for Project A. So to calculate NPV, here's your cheat sheet right here for NPV, IRR, and MIRR. All we got to do is hit equal and uh, type NPV. Um, you could double click it here or you can write it all out. It prompts you for the rates which is R so you click on it right here it's 12 percent. Don't type any numbers within here just reference all the cells. So comma then it says all the cash flows from the first to the last. See it here values from one to the last. So in all the words do not include the cash flow occurring at time zero. So click right here drag all the way to the end and that's it really you close it and then as you know the initial cash flow occurs at time zero so that's not to be discounted that's why it's not part of this calculus all we got to do is to simply add it in to add it in simply hit plus and then click on it which of course this 5000 would have to be subtracted since uh, the input is in negative form so if I hit enter that's your um, Net present value. So let's go ahead and uh, make this look good. And um, so, in the same way, uh, we calculate the internal rate of return. It'll be equal IRR, open parenthesis, and here it says all the values, meaning all the cash flows. You see where I wrote it out from the first, from the initial cash flow to the last. All right. So IRR wants you to grab all of these from here all the way to the end. Uh, we don't need to put in a guess rate. The computer is smart enough to figure it out. So that's our rate of return. You can kick it up a notch to observe the extended decimal. MIRR also takes a similar form. So we type MIRR, open parenthesis, and again, we're going to have to grab all the cash flows from the initial cash flow to the last one. As you also see here, it says values. So we're going to start from here all the way to the end. And then we hit comma it says what's your financing rate your financing rate is your cost of capital so click on it comma it says what's your reinvestment rate the reinvestment rate assumption here is also the cost of capital so click on it one more time and then close parenthesis and that's what you have and you can extend the decimal just a tad to see exactly what it is so that's all there is to this guy right here as far uh, to, to these uh, um, to NPV, IRR, and MIRR. Now, as you know, as you can see here, the net present value uh, model says to go ahead and choose project B because its NPV is larger than that of A, but IRR says choose A because it's larger, its IRR is greater than that of B. So we do have a conflict. This kind of conflict occurs 
uh, whenever you are dealing with uh, mutually exclusive uh, projects, meaning a, a situation where you're going to have to choose one project and dump the other one. And this typically occurs when, when uh, larger uh, cash flows for one of the projects occur earlier and for the other project the larger cash flows occur later as you can see in this case and in such a case if the cost of capital is less than what we call crossover rate you're bound to have a conflict and this crossover rate is simply the uh, internal rate of return if you like associated with the cash flow differences so all I really did here if I delete this and get rid of all of these here all you do here is equal you click on this cash flow minus this other cash flow here and then you copy it all down alright and then you calculate the IRR of uh, these cash flow differences and when you do so you find that to be 14% 14.21%. So in any case where the cost of capital in use is less than this rate, you're going to have a conflict. NPV is going to say choose one project. IRR is going to say choose the other project. So to delineate this argument, you construct the NPV profile, which is basically calculating the NPV for each of these projects based on different rates, uh, different costs of capital. So for example, um, if cost of capital is 10%, this is the NPV for project A shown up here. And this is the NPV for project B shown up here. Observe that NPV for B is larger in the earlier phase up until it gets to a certain point. Let's head back here, right, uh, right around here, right? Maybe right there. So then after this point, after this 14%, NPV for A uh, is now larger. So this is telling us that NPV revises its decision based on the cost of capital, which is quite rational. So what you do then is to plot this. When you plot it, all right, you highlight all of these, and then you go to input, insert, and then you go to, where do we want to go? We we'll go to, oh, right there, this uh, line graph, insert it, and you can choose the first one. That's it right here. You can get rid of this blue one right here. If you right click here and you click select data and under select data, click on rate and remove it. All right, and then okay. You're gonna see that the blue line has vanished. But anyways, um, get all the bells and whistles hooked up and this is what you get for a final product. And you can see here that indeed the point where the profiles cross each other marks uh, is uh, at 14.21 percent. That at that point, the NPV of both projects is identical. Prior to this point, NPV for B is larger than that of A. Um, after this point. NPV for A is larger than that of B. In any event, observe that where the profiles cut the x-axis actually is the internal rate of return. For A, it's 18.7% right there, and for B, it's 16.55% right here. So a lot of story can be told regarding conflicts between projects in terms of which one is selected based on the NPV and the IRR by simply observing the NPV profiles of the two projects as I demonstrate here. And that's a wrap.